Oh, wow, that was quick. We'll get going live here in just a second. Are we on? Are we live? Yeah, there we are. Hey, good evening, everybody. How are you this Thursday night? Or morning, or whatever it is where you're at. Friday morning, Thursday night, what have you. It's good to see you, and it's good to be seen. All right, well, we'll wait for some folks to join in the chats before I dive right in, so I don't have to go back and repeat everything. Um, hope everyone's having a fine evening. I'm not. I'm tired of being kicked around, but... So what? What does it matter? It's just me. It's just me doesn't matter at all you know it's that armadillo defense I just curl up in a ball and get kicked around anyway yeah well, I might as well just go ahead and start talking people will join or won't you know I certainly don't want to deny all three of my viewers uh, uh, any salient details um, I did, uh, I, I, I did do my good deed for the day. Uh, I was on my way to the supermarket earlier and one of, uh, Florida's, uh, box tortoises, beautiful squarish looking guy or girl. I don't know how to tell the gender of a tortoise. Um, but he, I'll say he, he looked like a German, uh, Fritz helmet, so... I'll call him a he, uh, was chucking across my street and I stopped my car and picked him up, carried him over to the shoulder and set him down. So hopefully he's having a fine old time now and is digging around looking for crickets or whatever, or roots to eat or so. We salute you, Mr. Florida Turtle, and all your efforts at keeping the soil aerated and biodiversity up. Oh, and incidentally, yes, I did uh, sterilize my hands uh, afterwards because, you know. Oh, no. I have no concurrent viewers now. I had three, and now I have none. Now it says I have two. So, hello. Welcome. Um, so yeah, that was kind of a nice thing, saving Mr. Turtle. Um, and I went to, uh, went to the market and I got dinner and I came home and promptly chipped a molar. That's a lot of fun. Took a little chunk out of a, out of a tooth. Yay! I'm in a delightful mood because of that. So let's talk about anything else. Uh, I, I'm sorry, by the way, if I'm half in shadow. Yes, I just blessed you all. Uh, being half in shadow and half not. Because um, even more good news, I set up my studio lights and sat down, and about 10 seconds before I clicked start, that one over there decided to die. So that one over there is the only one I'm getting light from right now. Um these work great except when they don't and they don't pretty frequently so yeah yeah that was uh, that was kind of a shitty time what are you gonna do right uh, and so yeah I don't, I don't know what I'm gonna do uh, but as the title says, D and D NFTs. Uh, so, it, first of all, I don't know if if anyone has has approached D and D from creating NFTs. Uh, and second of all, I only barely understand NFTs. Um, they're silly and they're like combine the worst aspects of Beanie Baby collecting and Magic the Gathering card collecting and the tulip bulb economy and make it 
all digital. There's nothing physical about it at all. You can't own anything. You just wire transfer some money and they to someone and they send you a JPEG that they claim is the original, even though they could turn around and sell that JPEG again. Or if you wanted that JPEG or that tweet or that that animated GIF or text file or whatever, you could just take a screen grab of it or copy and paste it to your computer. Um, no, this is actually a very cool thing. Uh, let me see if I can find this real quick. Um, actually, I don't... Let me see. Let me see if I can find this. We've talked a lot about deities and demigods on... on um, on the channel here and one of the um, you know about the rarity of the unexpurgated version or the presumed rarity of the unexpurgated version and then later versions and you know how the print run was changed so fast that you know the 14 pantheons and the little thank you note to to uh uh chaosium were still in the book uh despite the fact that they pulled out you know two entire chapters of the book um and people have all kinds of wrong-headed ideas about its supposed rarity and etc but um it's not. It's it's not a terribly rare book. Honestly, if you were just going by the average condition and its percentage of copies left and its slight appreciation, you really shouldn't be paying more than $50 for a copy. But of course, if you see an unexpurgated uh, uh, Deities and Demigods on eBay, People put all kinds of, of uh, little, um, you know, catchphrases on it. Illegal, subject of a lawsuit, forbidden, uh, you know, uh, all prints destroyed, etc. And it, it's wrong and it's stupid. Um, And it commands ridiculous prices. Just to give you guys an idea, uh, I had a, an unexpurgated copy back in the day. And I sold off a bunch of my D&D books for beer money when I was in college. That included. Um, I bought, bought a copy in the mid-1990s. I traded someone my softback copy of cyberpunk 2020 and i put a 20 dollars bill in it i made a deal with a guy i said i'm sending you 20 bucks in cyberpunk 2020 and i sent it to him and he sent me one um i had friends give me copies and so on and over the years i've owned 13 of them well i've owned 14 of them and 13 of them were the unexpurgated versions and i've given them away and sold them off uh over time um, the, 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 the reality is it's just not that hard to get your hands on if you know where to look and are willing to be patient on the price. However, <laughs> this does not pertain to what you could get from TSR back in 1980 or scrape up on eBay or out of a used bookstore, etc., etc. today. No. Was it? It was uh, last night. Jim Ward, uh, the author of Deities and Demigods for TSR and its progenitor, Gods, Demigods, and Heroes, uh, which was re originally released for OD&D a few years prior, um, Jim found his typed manuscript for deities and demigods. Now, it text-wise, it is exactly what you would have gotten in the completed copy. 
There are no major edits to it. There are some grammar and spelling fixes. There's no artwork in it. It's just double spaced 10 point pica um, or 12 point pica, whatever, 11 uh, single sided typed pages. But he found his manuscript, all 400 some odd pages of it, um, or 250 pages of it, or whatever. And he put it up on eBay. So if you are looking for a copy of Deities and Demigods, let me just put that link. There it is in the Facebook chat. And here it is. I hope it works in uh, the, uh, the YouTube chat. It is currently sitting at $12,300. And for the link shy, let me read this to you. Um, special item, James, uh, original James Ward TSR, Deities and Demigods Manuscript, D&D Gygax. You know, you got to get the keywords in there. This is the original manuscript from the collection of James Ward used to make the Deities and Demigods hardbound book. Presenting the James Ward collection. Now, I th this, this strikes me that... Like, this almost seems like something Paul Stormberg would put up, but I don't think this is one of his. Uh, but it says, presenting the James Ward collection. This may be one of the most historical items you can buy from Jim's collection. It is the original manuscript for the pop popular TSR Hard Brown book, Deities and Demigods, released in 1980 by TSR Hobbies in Lake Geneva. It also includes a letter from Jim himself authenticating the manuscript and sharing a little backstory about it. It is being sold as found in the original cardboard box it was stored in. Jim worked at TSR in Lake Geneva for 20 plus years. He is the creator of Gamma World, the first role-playing game in the post-apocalyptic genre. Let me know if you have any questions. Shipping is $49.99. So I guess if the if if not getting free shipping is a deal breaker. Now I when I saw this, I had intended fully to throw a, a bid on it just to say that I bid on it uh, of like 50 bucks when it first popped up. Um, but when I bid $50 on it, I was auto outbid and that was, you know, um, I did not increase. I did not raise my bid. Uh, but over the course of 35 bids, let's take a look here. Started at 99 cents, then went to a dollar, then went to 44, then 50, 56, 101, 01, 151, 01. 167, 201, 400, 410, 505, 600, 850, 870, 1,000. That must have been rescinded because the next bid is 930. Um, 1,100, 1,500, 2,000, 2,001, 2,500. 3550 $4,005, $4,999, $5,7500, $10,000. And that's all by the same person, by the way. Apparently, well, they probably set their bid to auto increase up to 10000 And then we have another bid of 10000 10,300, 10,600, 10,900, and that was just by 8 o'clock last night. And this thing went up at 615. 11,000, 12,000, 12,200, and it is now as of 4.03 a.m. Pacific date time. So seven o'clock this morning it was sitting firmly at twelve thousand three hundred dollars so if you're itching to get a copy of deities and demigods now let's just let's go on ebay here and let's take a gander D D. oops 
No, I don't want to sign in right now. D and D. Deities and demigods. All right, here's one that's bid up to $71. There's Jim's showing up. <laughs> here's one with a buy it now of $625. A 128-page copy, which is expurgated for $60, no bids with a day left. A $237 or best offer copy 128 page revised for 50 that's that's about ten dollars off I, I i would think it'd be closer to 40 but oh it's 50 canadian dollars so that's like eight bucks american um one that's just labeled as third print for 125 dollars 134 134 99.99 or best 179 or best offer. Oh my. This one is um, highly damaged. It's it's put back together with red duct tape and they're offering it 99.99. But they offer free shipping. 99 to 50. 35 with zero bids. Or 100 by a now. One that looks like it's had bleach poured on the cover for 137. Oh, interesting. Here's uh, a Deities and Demigods and Fiend Folio for $60. Yeah, people want like 100 bucks, or people are asking 100 bucks in, in some cases for the expurgated version. Let's just take a look. Let me let's let's scroll up a little bit here. Let's give ourselves scrolliosis. Sold items. And let's do let's take away Wow. Wow. So you take away 128, and there's no hits. Here, let's, you know what, let's, let's put in 144 and see what happens. So this is, uh, th this is sold. I have this, yeah, completed items. One that the bidding eventually got up to 113, 117. <laughs> one that looks like it's in about as good a shape as mine, but it's 86 bucks. Somebody only bid $86 on it. Um... 405, 200, 262. That is a 128 page one. 128 pages. 156 for 144 pages. Let me see. This one sold on May. This one only went for 47 and had three bids. Oh, let's see original listing. See if he's got a. See, he got a page count or anything. That one's in pretty good shape, but I, I'd I'd wager it's not. Yeah, I would wager this is not a unexpurgated copy. But yeah, I just that struck me as being really interesting. Um, a uh, that that Jim is selling the manuscript, and I'll tell you this: good luck to Jim. I I hope he sells it. I hope it goes up to fifty thousand bucks 
in the next nine days. Uh, yeah, I said that. I, I hope the book takes off. I hope it sells for $50,000 and I hope Jim lives large and enjoys the hell out of the money and it, it sets him up for a year. He can just put his feet up and not worry about anything for a year. With that said, I also know that Jim is a working machine and he would never just do that. He would never be like, well, I got mine, that he's got other things uh, going on. Uh, that he's going to work on. But I think it's cool that it's out there. And the one thing, just at a gander, the one thing I can tell that is not, um, doesn't appear to be the case. And I'd like to get Jim back on the show, back, back on the live stream again, and, and ask him this, and maybe he can tell us after the auction is complete, is I don't, think I do not believe that there is a um, there the, that uh, this has like stuff that you couldn't get elsewhere as far as game material like there's no there's no secret Greyhawk sauce in there that is only in that manuscript I could be wrong it may be that something there's something incredible in there that may only go to one person and they may only ever see it. Uh, I, I hope that's not the case, but if that's the case, you know. I mean, it, it's kind of like, uh, you know, if two rich guys, one of them owns a prototype Ferrari and the other buys it from him. But I don't know what engine's in it. I'll never get to drive it. It's kind of like Schrodinger's rarity. Did it really happen? I don't know. I don't know. So I just thought that was really, really cool. Go, if you're watching this, uh, and you want to you wanna open that up in another tab and check it out, you should definitely soap out Jim's auction just to see how crazy it gets, just to see how expensive it gets. I want to see it get phenomenally uh, high priced and, and Jim just walk away with a giant cartoon loot bag with a, a dollar sign with the two lines through it on the side from this deal um, and I don't think what I'm about to say is going to impact anyone who's considering bidding on the item and all both of my viewers tonight, I don't think you're gonna you're you're gonna say, wait, I was gonna bid on that until you said this thing, so now I'm not. But I don't believe that uh, again, I, I don't I don't think there's anything in there that is not just in deities and demigods. Now Jim has some pictures on the eBay auction. You can see some pages. Let me pop back and look at a few of these. I mean, if you get your copy of Deities and Demigods out or you look at a PDF of it and, like, the preface is just as it is in the print book. Now, I'm not trying to rob this thing of its uniqueness or its specialness. Um, not in the least. But don't sit up at night thinking that you're, you're never going to get to see a cool thing. Like, uh... You know, there's um, Ariok's page. You can see a little bit of that. Uh, you can see some stuff from the uh, the uh, Nawan mythos. Just just little bits. He hasn't shown whole pages except for the preface page. Just little bits. But it's super fascinating, and it's neat to see a piece of history like this uh, up for sale up for consideration 
So So that's that. Um Now I believe uh that Kyle will not be on tomorrow night. I'm actually busy tomorrow night at about this time. Unless he wants to just do a very, very short live stream beforehand. Um, but the night after tomorrow, not this coming live stream, but the one after, I think we'll have our co-host back. Uh, the, uh, the lockdown has been lifted where he's at now, so kids can go back to school and he can spend his morning BSing with us. But we hope he gets business instead. I honestly, Kyle, I hope you're just so slammed with business. Um, but if not, hey, we welcome you back with open arms. Or at least I do. I don't know if there's anybody else out there. Says I have two concurrent viewers. Hello, concurrent viewers. Oh my goodness, what else? You know, I, I wish this is one of those times, once again, and I mentioned this before, when I sincerely wish that I could have um, some background music or, or like some intro music. And it kills me because it, I... On the one hand, from YouTube's point of view... I get it, but on the other hand, if I played like a 10 second snippet or a 5 second snippet of Do You Feel Like I Do by Peter Frampton, first of all, it's not going to, it's not going to earn me any goddamn money at all, okay? I, I might as well face reality. This channel is never going to get monetized. I, I've got 663 viewers sometimes. I say sometimes because I could look later tonight and it's down to 660. You know, I don't know if that's a YouTube mistake or if people just like, no, unsubscribe because I don't, I don't know, do whatever for them. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, you know, if I played a little intro music that was from... Zeppelin or Frampton or Robin Trower or Sabbath or something like that and outro music likewise is it is it really is somebody gonna gonna go oh I can no 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 I I don't have to buy a copy of Led Zeppelin 4 I can hear this fat guy in Florida talk over 10 seconds of it and it's just as good No, the answer is no. Nobody's going to do that. Sorry for the little rant there. A manuscript is like a demo version of a song to me, and I am not such a fripper collector. Um, yeah. Yeah, you know, it's... Um, and there are a lot of people, to kind of keep with the musical theme, there's a lot of people who... They'll pay big for demo tapes and so on. Like, you go look at a lot of classic bands. Um, uh, I mean, Jimmy Page has made a cottage industry out of A, remastering Led Zeppelin every four or five years, and B, going through all of the recording sessions and cherry picking out stuff and cleaning it up and putting it on new compilation, compilations. You know, Led Zeppelin, the studio tapes, Led Zeppelin, the BBC recordings, Led Zeppelin, the, the John Peel, you know, just all that bootleg stuff that you only dreamed about back in high school in the 80s is now at people's fingertips. But it's a damn sight less expensive than $12,300. I'm sure if Mr. Page had the interest and was not already, you know, swimming in money along with Robert Plant and um, John Paul Jones, uh, Bonzo, rest in peace, of course. But um, 
you know, that <laughs> they might uh, do an NFT demo and say, okay, yeah, you can buy this. Um, interestingly enough, Carly Simon actually did that about 15, 20 years ago. Uh, if you're not a classic rock fan, uh, you might still know Carly Simon's work, You're So Vain. Um, there she recorded after she broke up with James Taylor because he used to get high and beat the shit out of her. But um, there was a lot of speculation because Carly Simon knew a lot of men about who You're So Vain was about. Was it about Warren Beatty? Was it about uh, uh, David Geffen? Was it about uh, uh, was it about Mick Jagger? And Mick Jagger sang backups on the end bridge of the song. Um, and she said, no, it is about a specific person. It's not a composite. It's not about all men in general. Is it about it is about a specific version? And so, for some exorbitant fee, I want to say it was like $300,000, $400,000, she would play a live session of You're So Vain, tell you who she was singing about in the song, and explain how each lyric broke down as she strummed through it. And David Geffen actually shelled out for it. And like, you know, part of it was you had to sign a contract and say you wouldn't say it. And the, the amount of money she was charging, I don't know if it was a half a million or 300,000 or something. Um, but you had to, uh, you, you, you had to sign an NDA that said, you're not gonna tell. And with the price point, I would think it would, it would keep somebody who is gonna break that NDA you know, leak that out. Um, because, I mean, once you say, yeah, this song's about Mick Jagger, let's say. I mean, it's, you know, lots of people assumed that it was about James Taylor. But it really wasn't. Because he didn't do all the things in the song. Um, and people have tried to figure it out based on the line, uh, about the, the races at Saratoga and your horse naturally won. Well, horses are an investment and a lot of people can invest in horses but do it quietly and privately like an equity group, no pun intended, can invest in a horse. So no, you know, James Taylor didn't own a racehorse and nobody knows if he owned, if he owned any money in a racehorse. But she says it wasn't James Taylor. But she kind of gave a proto NFT to David Geffen who gave her a lot of money. Now I don't know if it was a one time offer, but I'll tell you this. If I hit the lottery tomorrow, <laughs> I mean a big lottery, like a $20 million lottery. No, I'm not spending a half million dollars. You know, I'm not spending one half of, 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 uh, of one half, one quarter of 1% of it to, to find out. But, uh, yeah, like a big fat Powerball win. I'd be, I, I'd tell my, who, the accounting company. Yeah, get a hold of Carly Simon. Yeah, the Carly Simon. Tell her I've got a check for her and I want an answer. <laughs> I want an exact answer from her. Who, who are you singing about, sweetheart? You know, I love the song. I think I, I, I think it goes without saying. We all love the song. Who's it about? Here. Here. Hell, I'll write you two checks. But we'll never know. But David Geffen knows for the princely sum of how many of our hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, but anyway, this is... Uh, this is a different matter. A buddy of mine was kind of laughing about this. Speaking of hitting the lottery and buying expensive things, he's like, yeah, you know, if I, if I was like, had like Jeff Bezos kind of money, I would just go in and I would, I would just like bid a half million dollars on it. And then I would take the pages and I would do like a video a day 
of me learning how to do origami with each one of the pages. <laughs> Just to drive the collector the, the, the collectors through the roof. The people who would like, yeah, I bid twelve thousand three hundred dollars on it. That sucker is gonna be my what? Somebody bought it for it? Oh man. And then go on YouTube and just like, ooh, look a swan. He can pull down on his feet and make his wings flap. <laughs> That's perhaps a bit extreme. I don't know that I would actually destroy something if I bought it. Um, particularly not a manuscript. Uh, you know, that might be something just because I think uh, I think Jim Ward is is nice enough that I would outbid everybody. Pay him. But after I get a good look at it, give him the manuscript back and just say, look, here you go, man. If you wanted it back, I would just say, Pfft. Uh That's what a lot of people did when Dave Sutherland, um, the celebrated uh, artist of, of many, 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 many Dungeons & Dragons products and the author of Queen of the Demon Web Pits, uh, David C. Sutherland, when he fell ill and... Wizards of the Coast kicked him to the curb rather unceremoniously. He, um, a lot of people, uh, it may have even been after he passed away. I'm not sure. We, we can ask Paul Stormberg the truth of this if we can get Paul on the live stream again one day. Uh, but a lot of people, and the collecting crowd, yes, the, the collecting crowd, um, they, bought several iconic pieces from his collection they bought uh minis that he had sculpted like the, there were miniatures done by some of the tsr artists that you could only buy at the hobby shop uh or at the dungeon hobby shop rather in lake geneva like they weren't made by grenadier or anybody they just they sculpted these they got a few casts and he was famous apparently for his um bugbears and his evil samurai um hobgoblins the oriental looking hobgoblins and he still had a lot of the original sculpts and then some of them that had actually been molded and cast and a lot of folks in the collecting community bought the stuff paid the sutherland estate and then refused a delivery which means their dad's stuff went back to the family so it's like I won this auction. Here's a thousand dollars for this print, or you know, for these minis or whatever. And now here's the minis back, and I think that's just sweet. I think that's very, very, very nice. Um, better get Carl Simon on a lie detector then. Uh, I'm not sure I understand the reference. Oh, Carly Simon. Carly Okay, I was like, Carl Simon? <laughs> um, yeah, get Carly Simon on a lie detector. But I do wonder who she was singing about. It, it, it drives me crazy when I hear the song on the classic rock radio station. Who is that? Whoever it is, they're obviously an asshole and, and very deserving of her uh, of her ire, but never know I think it's uh, C-A-R-L let me see I think it's with a Y but I, I, I could you, you know what let me see here see if this is increased see if my bid went through it's still sitting there at 12.3 that's not to say people haven't attempted to outbid it or that 12300 is indeed the amount it will sell for if the person just and i mean it's stratospheric right it's 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 way up there um but that's just the max you have to bid i think i don't completely understand ebay and hidden bids but uh so let's see this carly simon Seventy-five. She's from the Bronx. I wouldn't have. I, I, I wouldn't have. Uh, let's see. All right. 
origin and subject of the song. Long before Simon recorded what would be known as your so vain, the song was titled Bless You Ben. The first words were Bless You Ben, you came in when nobody else left off. Simon felt dissatisfied with the lyrics and put away the song until she attended a party one night where a famous guest appeared. A friend told Simon the male guest entered as if he was walking onto a yacht. Simon incorporated the words into the melody of Bless You Ben as she was composing on her piano and the song took on a whole new meaning. In 1983, she said the song was not about Mick Jagger, who contributed an uncredited backing vocal. In a 1993 book, Angie Bowie claimed to be the wife of a close friend mentioned in Your So Vain, and that Jagger for a time had been obsessed with her. Simon made another comment about the subject's identity as a guest artist on Janet Jackson's 2001 single, Son of a Gun, Bet You Think This Song Is About You, which sampled Your So Vain. Simon said about the song, The Apricot Scarf Worn by Nick Del Banco. Nothing in the words referred to Mick Jagger. Over the years, Simon has divulged letter clues and has claimed that the subject's name contains the letter A, E, and R. Shortly before the writing of the song, Simon was married to James Taylor. She has said that he was definitely not the subject of the song. David Bowie, David Cassidy. Wow, David Cassidy, like from the Partridge family? Uh, and Cat Stevens have all been cited by the press as speculative candidates. Okay, here it is. Uh, in, in 2003, Simon re agreed to reveal the name of the song subject to the highest bidder of the Martha's Vineyard Possible Dreams charity auction. With a top bid of $50,000, Dick Ebersol, president of NBC Sports and a friend of Simon, so it was a lot less than I thought, and not David Geffen, uh, won the rights to know the name of the subject of Your So Vain, a condition of the prize that Ebersol not reveal the name. Ebersol said Simon allowed him to divulge a clue about the person's name. Carly told me that I could offer up the entire world a clue as to what she'll tell me when we have this night in about two weeks, and the clue is the letter E is in the person's name. In 2004, Simon told Regis Philbin, if I tell it, it's going to come out in drips and drabs. And I've given out two letters, an A and an E, but I'm going to add one to it. I'm going to add an R in honor of you. So it's not David Geffen, because there's no R in it. Uh, in a 2007 interview, Warren Beatty said, let's be honest, the song's about me. Simon has said in 1983, it said in 1983 that Beatty certainly thought it was about him. He called me and said, thanks for the song. In, uh, let's see. In an interview for the 1978-82 version of the History of Rock and Roll radio series, producer Richard Perry said that Simon was essentially referring to Beatty while also evoking other previous relationships in her life. Howard Stern stated that Simon had privately revealed to him about whom the song was written about after her interview on his popular radio show. There's an odd aspect to it. He's not that vain. He also stated that... Uh, she had said it was a composite of three people. Hmm. See, that's a change from what I had originally heard. She confirmed that she has given the names to a few people, including Stern. Some guy named Dan Armstrong is mentioned here. <laughs> My God, this is hilarious. Uh, this is like a D&D &D puzzle, man. Simon said she had hidden the name in the then new recording of the song. The next day, the program's crew detected the word David concealed in a backplate whisper. However, Simon contradicted this saying she had spoken Ovid both forwards and backwards, and that sounded like David. She had reiterated that the name of the subject was a whispered in a re-recording of You're So Vain. There's a little whisper, and it's the answer to the puzzle. They speculated that it was Simon's former boss at Elector, David Geffen, which Jim Hart, Simon's ex-husband and close friend, denied the following day. Huh. And then in 2015, she's promoting her about-to-be-published memoir, said, I confirm that the second verse is Warren Beatty, uh, is about Warren Beatty, Beatty, and added that while Warren thinks the whole song is about him, he is the subject of that verse only, while the remainder of the song refers to two other still unnamed men. The song has originally had a fourth verse, possibly including another subject. So, make of that what you will. 
Paul says, if we're throwing around funny money, I'm paying Mark Miller to reprint Traveler in the little booklets. Big hardcover collections are cumbersome. Yeah, but I mean, you. I think, can't you get Traveler in the three booklets on, you know, I'm going to stop talking about Carly Simon. I'm going to look, let me see here. Let's see. Oh God! Type traveler in, and it just it just drowns you. <laughs> Guide to Fossa. Cla I didn't realize Fossa published Traveler at any point. All these supplements. Yeah, you can buy the three books and just send them to... <laughs> you can get the PDF, you can get PDFs and print them like some monk from the Dark Ages. Sure. Man, Paul, you're bitter about that. <laughs> just send them to Lulu, dude. They may even be... The, the, here, you know, let me see. Yeah, just buy the PDFs and send them to Lulu and get them, get them saddle stitched, like some medieval monk, dude. This is the, this is current year. You can just download the the book and then send it to somebody and have them print it for you. It's current year. So I wouldn't. Uh... I, I I would guess if you really if you really wanted the three LBBs just just do that just 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 get the the PDFs and send them to Lulu and say you know okay I want this format I want nice semi gloss cover and boom there you go you won't have the box I'll give you that you got a point I could use Lulu grab a bunch of stuff on a humble bundle. I barely understand what Humble... I bought, like, 10 Yank and Bank Flight Sims and three Batman games on a Humble Bundle that was like, pay as much as you want. And I was like, here's a dollar. <laughs> so, so I just, like, raked in and filled my Steam library with all these insane... Like, and I've never played them. I have, like all of the Batman Arkham games that people were like gushing about for years there around 20, uh, 2014, 2015, maybe a couple, no, before then, I think even 2013, 2012 in there. And I that never fired them up. So I, I didn't know that Humble Bundle uh, did so much core rule stuff. Um, I know occasionally like I would see modules pop up on a Humble Bundle, but I didn't realize that like stuff, I, I thought it was strictly indie stuff that would pop up there. Um, so that's news to me. I just don't want the rules etched on a trauma plate of a book that I could practice my curls with. Yeah, no, I get you. I get you, dude. I mean, one of the big things that, like, put me off of getting um, the uh, um, Journey into the Unknown, Keep on the Borderlands um, compilation book from uh, Goodman Games where they, you know, they publish all the variant copies of modules hardbound and then they stick a fifth edition version in the back of it and they do interviews with people who helped create it and so on and etc. Um, was like, how actually usable is this going to be at the gaming table? Um, and I've shown them here on the live stream before, but these things are massive and they are heavy, but I'll give them this. I'll, I I will give Goodman this. They do open and they do lay flat, and it's the same with Wizards of the Coast. And for the most part, 
the uh, the Dungeons of Dread S1234 compilation, which is not the same as Realms of Horror, which was a t similar TSR super module uh, that is terrible. And it's terrible because it only includes part of S3 and part of S4. Um, all of S1 and all of S2, but only part of S3 and part of S4. I don't understand. And you don't get any color art with it at any rate. But, yeah, I've been lucky in that most of the hardbacks I've gotten uh, in recent times to game with have actually been gameable things and not just like, ooh, that's going to look good on my deep geek den bookshelf or coffee table or what have you. So, um, so make of that what you will. But no, I think you can take these and just and just send them over and get just a, you know, if 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 we open this up, who says that my live streams aren't informative and helpful and educational? We're gonna we're gonna see what Lulu can do for us right here. So let's just go over there. All right, so let's let's create a book. Let's print a book. Start your print book. I can't do that. It won't. Damn it! I gotta sign up. No. Oh, pricing calculator. That's that's it. What? So, uh, it's gonna be a print book. Please select book and size. Um. What is this, a 5x8 book, or is it a 6x9? Let's just say 6x9, just for the sake of the argument. Um, page counts. What are the, uh, you know what, here, let's, Classic Traveler. Doesn't really give, oh, okay. Um, oh, page count, 48, all right, 48. black and white standard paper type 60 pound cream binding type saddle stitched cover finish I think they were glossy but that might be too glossy that might be almost plasticky let's say matte $2.96 per book and the PDFs are six dollars a piece so for just a hair under nine dollars so 27 bucks and you could get the entire traveler let me see is it no it's it's it, it won't keep my settings i can't get a link to this to share with you guys but yeah for about 27 bucks you can get all of the classic traveler books in uh in separate volumes volume one two and three Print it up, ready to use. Now, if you want that gloss cover, let's go down. It's standard black and white because it's just it's 99.99999% of it is text. I think there's like one little tiny picture of a computer console or something, so it doesn't matter. Uh, so if we go glossy, yeah, it's still 296. $2.96 per book. Paul, go forth and buy the classic Traveler books. Upload them to Lulu and create yourself your own set of CT books. Do it now. I'll wait. We'll wait. We got five more minutes of live stream. We can wait. Just, just let us know when you get back. Is it warm where you're at, passerby? Uh, who do you like in the All-Star game, anyway? I'm 
here to learn at the feet of Buddha man. Buddha man, butter man, that's me, butter man. Um, but no, all kidding aside, I probably carried that gag on a little bit too far. But um, yeah, it's it's literally just it, it's it, it it is literally only. Um, two bucks. Uh, what if I create my book? It, okay, that's when it's like email, password, sign in. I might do this tonight. I might grab something and create. You know what? Let me see. DMs Guild. Ah, yes. <laughs> uh, let's see. Core rules. Hardcore rules. Hardcore. Edition original. So if I do this, I almost want to buy this PDF, even though I've got it already. It's 122 pages. I, hmm. I guess you could probably cut this apart. Let's do a full-size preview. Oh, no, they're not giving you the... See, they're using... Yeah, they're, they're, they're using their, their, their re-type set, OD&D set, for the, for the, the bundle of of the OCE that they have scanned on on um, on DM's Guild and I presumably on Drive Through and RPG Now as well. Um, yeah, you can't get the individual booklets. This is weird. Okay, well maybe it's not considered core. Maybe supplemental rules, swords and spells. All in one rule books. Oh, it just brings us back to chainmail and OD and D. This is weird. Monsters and NPCs. How about that? Gods, demigods, and heroes. So, you know what? Let me see. I'm gonna ditch that. I'm gonna stay in this, and I'm gonna let's. Okay, so there's Blackmore. There's supplement to Blackmore. And supplement one Greyhawk. Now, interestingly, Blackmore actually has its original cover, but Greyhawk uses the the uh, retype set cover. I wonder why that is. That's very, very, very unusual. I mean, I guess you could find good, clean scans of the cover art and have that redone. Hmm. Hmm. So you could print up your own OD and D set like that. Well, who knows? You know, I was mentioning earlier, uh, either late last week or early this week or something like that. I don't remember that I was not going to do the paint streams anymore because you guys know my paint stick. <laughs> paint stick. <laughs> yes, you know my paint stick, don't you, lad? Um, your attack was too slow. No better than that of a clumsy child. Um, but, uh, as far as painting miniatures, like, having the stuff out, and it's still out on the other, on the other side of the table, I was still painting, like, every day. Uh, even though, like, even on days when I wasn't painting with you guys, or when I was painting with you guys, and I are, I'm like, well, I've already got the stuff out, and I've already got this paint out, I might as well paint stuff. And, like, I haven't painted since the last time I painted for you guys, with one notable exception. I'm still working on my uh, Demon Idol, which I can't wait to show off, regardless of whether or not I, I ever paint anything on stream again. Um, 
but yeah, I was painting a lot more when I was painting for you guys and with you guys. Um, so I don't, yeah, I, I, <laughs> maybe I'll have to start doing paint streams again just so I don't, I don't stop painting. I don't want to stop painting because, I mean, a guy I used to know once told me, um, as I asked him, uh, I said, hey, you know, could you teach me a few guitar chords? And it, at the time, I, not now, not now, this, this is many years in the past, at the time we were good friends. I said, hey, could you teach me a few guitar chords? And he said, I could. And you'd pick it up, because it's really easy. And you know, you could strum like the the rhythm chords from your favorite classic rock songs and feel real good and do some chicken picking. And you might even buy a guitar. You know, you'd you'd spend some money, and then you'd stop. You'd find excuses to not do it anymore. Like you wouldn't just like. You know, it's 2.35 on a Sunday afternoon. Pick up guitar and play and practice. And I didn't really take an insult at the time from it. I listened to what he said. He said, so many people ask me, man, teach me to play guitar. And I used to do it enthusiastically. And I'd see them after six months or six weeks or a week or a month or whatever. And they would... I'd say, hey, how's the guitar going? Oh, well, I haven't really had time to practice. Or, you know, I played some and I'm not getting any good. Well, you know, how much are you practicing? Well, you know, I haven't really had the time. There's always time to do stuff. And so what they would learn would fall off. And they would go from having spent a couple of hours over the course of, you know, over the course of two or three days in a row learning basic guitar chords from him um you know fingering and and uh and, and so on and say hey hey yeah i you know I, I i can uh strum along to to uh sweet home alabama and and you know pick the first few notes of stairway and th this is awesome you know and then they'd stop and then they'd wonder why that they weren't getting any better have you been, oh yeah, I've been practicing. How often? Well, you know, practiced a few weeks ago. And I don't want the same thing to happen. It kind of happens to me with painting. Like I go and I look at some minis that I did a few years ago. And then I look at what I'm doing now and it's like worse. Well, it's because I didn't fucking stick at it. <laughs> so I need to get back to painting. Whether I do some of it with you guys. I think I, I may do some of it with you guys again. There's going to be some stuff. There's going to be some airbrushing and some speed painting and things like that I want to show you guys. But you guys know my painting style. Prime, you know, uh, prep the mini, prime the mini, color triad, base, wash, highlight, highlight. That's, that's really it. To, to every section. And then, you know, you pick out details with a detail brush. The end. That's how you paint. And you just do it over and over and over and over. Well, um, you know, obviously, as I've said in the past, I don't want to keep subjecting you guys to, to seeing that time and again, but I, I, I may come back around to painting. Just to keep me painting. And if you're painting, or if you're like, I really want to paint, and what Bill's showing me is really insightful, but I'm not, I don't want to push him on the subject if he doesn't want to do it. No, I want to do it, and I will do it. I will do whatever you guys want me to. Whatever both of the viewers who watch this, this stream want, I will do. And that's a fact. See where we're sitting at. Yeah, so still 663 subscribers. <sighs> but 
But anyway, um, I believe, I think, I am not 100% sure, but I think, I'm live streaming with Jay Ashiro and Kat tonight. I don't know what we're going to talk about. They'll they'll bring me a topic and I will I will hold court on it and and submit to any questions that you guys might have and it'll be a good time. Uh, and as soon as uh, as soon as they let me know what they're doing, I will share the link on Facebook. Uh, obviously, I won't share it here because I can't be live streaming here and then live streaming with them at the same time unless they wanted to hop onto my live stream which might actually be kind of enjoyable but then i stream way earlier than they do and they stream almost every night but anyhow um i should be over there tonight and i'll let you guys i'll let you guys know um as quick as i know but with that said, I'm going to get a, get a drink of water. I don't want to talk too much. I've got streaming to do with them later. Um, passerby, I don't know. Uh, what coast are you on, Passerby? Or are you in the are you in the the middle? Or are you on one of the coasts? Or are you in another country? I mean, I think in a couple of hours, maybe. So, um, possibly, I mean, I, I, I would guess it would be in a couple of hours. Like, like sometimes I'll tell Kyle, like, yeah, we're going to stream at 830. He's like, that has no meaning to me. I live in Australia. <laughs> it's tomorrow morning here, dude. What? Tell, tell me when. To, to, like, give me an hour count. Okay, we're going to be streaming in five and a half hours. So I don't know where you're at, but... Uh, uh, you're... Paul, you don't know if you're in the Netherlands? Okay. Um, the Nether... Oh, okay. Passerby confirmed it for Paul. Paul, you're in the Netherlands, apparently. Um, so... A couple of hours. Uh, keep an eye on him on on his on his stuff because he will put up the stream. Like I see, like so I I like to watch his live streams. Some nights I'm busy, some nights I can't. But I like to watch his streams and sometimes, um, yeah, I'll just be noodling along. Like oh, Jay Shiro Finney is live. Well, how long has he been live? 75 minutes. Awesome. Stream's about to end. Thank you, YouTube. Very cool. So, um, maybe an hour and a half, maybe two hours. Just kind of vulch his stream and, you know, just, I'm sorry. Anyway. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get rest up a little bit for his stream and have a couple of cold snacks during his stream, I think. and pour myself a nice tall, nice tall glass of, and uh, I'll, um, I'm guessing you guys are my audience tonight and you'll be over there. So I'll see you guys over there. But to everyone, whether you're here, whether you're watching over on Facebook, uh, what have you, uh, have yourself a wonderful evening. Thank you for stopping by to watch and, uh, I'll see you all later. Peace.